All right, so we're checking out the Happy Model Mob Light 7 Walk Snail Edition. So this one, obviously very similar to the Mob, the Mob Light 7 HD Zero that I reviewed not too long ago, but it comes with a different frame, canopy, of course, and of course the video transmitter is different. It's the Walk Snail system and not the HD Zero system. Same motors and props, the uh, 1002 20,000 kV and the Gem fan uh, by blade props and the same uh, flight controller board in here. Uh, I think I forget what it's called, but it's the same one in both of these. One has, of course, five amps. Now, you may have noticed here that I did rotate the uh, flight controller and everything on this frame on the HD0 version so the battery can go in sideways. Um, I did put a post on some somewhere on my YouTube community page or Instagram or something like that. And I did not have to desolder anything. I just uh, rerouted the motors through the other way um, and it worked. So if you're wondering about that, I, I didn't think it required a video, but I'm just letting you guys know that I was able to do that. And um, it flies better because it doesn't, um, I did actually modify the PID loop as well on that one, but that's not a topic for this video. Um, if you're really interested in that, let me know in the comments. I might make a video on that one if there's enough interest. But anyway, on this walk snail version, they went with a um, frame that actually takes a 2S battery. And they've created this little 3D printed adapter here so that you can use 1S batteries. And they just slide into that space right there. Actually works pretty well, holds it in nicely. I did use these four batteries in my testing. Uh, GMB 450, 520, this... Uh, 650 and then this GNB 720. I will put the the weights of each battery and the approximate flight time range here on the screen. So in the box, uh, of course, you get the drone itself and a few accessories, screwdriver, prop removal tool, extra set of props, and you get some screws and other miscellaneous uh, parts uh, in case you lose any off the drone. And you get this very important cable here, this USB to this plug right here. That goes to the walk snail board. Um, I did a video already on the 1S walk snail board, so I'll link that in the video description if you want more detail on that. But this is where that plugs in, and then you can get the uh, 1080p footage that's recorded onto the, I think it's eight gigabytes of memory that's on the board. You can pull that off of there. It is using USB 2.0 protocols, so it does take a fair amount of time to pull the files off. I think if you have a full eight gigabytes of uh, files on the board. It takes about four to five minutes to pull them off. Um, and you do need to have some fan cooling on the board so it doesn't overheat because it does require battery power on the board to uh, access the memory files. So the canopy is a little bit different from the HG0 version because um, of the camera size. So they made one just specifically for this one. I think this was actually the original nano size, like 14 millimeter camera canopy. And they actually made a custom one for the HD zero camera, which is a different size. But uh, yeah, it, uh, let me just actually show you the weight of these. So the HD zero version comes in at 29.3 grams. The walk snail version comes in at 34.1 grams. And just for comparison, this is the Meteor 75 from Beta FPV. This one comes in at 39.7 grams. So approximately five gram difference between the three models. So uh, about 29 for the HT0, uh, the Walk Snail Model Light 7 is about five grams more, and then you get another five grams more for the Meteor 75. All right, so just a quick little note about the um, Meteor 75 versus the Mob Light 7 uh, Walk Snail. They're both Walk Snail. Um, Obviously the Meteor 75 is heavier and weighs more. So all these videos will be linked down in the video description if you want to see the footage from the Meteor 75 walk snail. Uh, basically it's got a heavier setup, much bigger canopy, more protection for the walk snail uh, board. So the, uh, basically yeah, not as much stuff is exposed, but this additional protection gives you more weight. The frame is probably about the same weight I think overall, but you got heavier motors and props in this one. Tri-blade props and 1102 motors in this one, so that gives, you know, that basically where the extra five grams comes from. Uh, but otherwise, um, you know, in terms of the performance difference, the 
you know, obviously you get a little bit better performance because of the BT 2.0 connector, but because of the extra weight that kind of gets negated. And all, even though this is only flying the, the PH 2.0 connector, uh, the performance on the Moblite 7 walk snail is actually better. That five grams makes a pretty big difference. So you can, this is much more agile, has much more accurate ability, um, just overall. Um, and uh, I was able to use bigger batteries on this one, like the 720 versus your Ambo was limited to the 450s on this one here. So the flight time is limited by the battery size on this frame. Whereas I was, I was able to go to bigger batteries and this one you get more flight time on this one. And it was also five grams lighter, so you get more flight time because of the less weight as well. So ultimately, if you're looking for more performance, uh, accurate performance especially, the uh, Moblite the 7 walks out is better. But you know, keep in mind that the PID tune is um, needs to be adjusted for larger batteries um, if you're going to be taking trying to take advantage of the accurate performance. If you happen to get one that uh, has the sort of uh, vulnerability for vibrations like the one I've got here, and I do want to talk more about how this one flies and how it's different from this one here. So these these are two. You know, obviously. You know, if you're already in the HD0 system, you don't really care about Walksnail. And if you're in the Walksnail system, why do you care about HG0? So um, I'm kind of thinking this comparison is kind of pointless, you know, because basically one's just five grams heavier than the other one. Um, but the parts are pretty similar, except for the frame and canopy. It's basically running off the same uh, flight controller, uh, motors, and props. And what it boils down to is that this additional five grams does take away from uh, the agility and, the, and increase, the decreases the power to weight ratio. So the overall performance of this one is less compared to the HD zero version. Of course, you know, that is pretty much unavoidable because you've got a heavier camera, heavier video transmitter, and heavier frame overall to support those parts. So, you know, every tenth of a gram in, in these size drones really makes a difference. So when you add five more grams, it's inevitable that the performance isn't going to be nearly as good. Now, I'm not saying it's bad. There's some things about this that you need to be aware of that I found when I was doing my testing. So this this one seems to be pit tuned for the 451S. I got the least amount of vibrations when flying the 451S. Of course, that gave me the least amount of flight time. Um, as I got to a bigger and heavier battery, as I increased my battery size and weight, the vibrations got worse. And especially if I was doing any type of full throttle type of maneuvers, like any, anything that had to do with freestyle. So if you were just racing this around um, in a straight line, maybe just doing gates and stuff like that, I think that's what this has been tuned for. It's been tuned for this specific battery and for a specific flying style, for basically just doing gates and street flying, level flying, not acro or anything like that, anything kind of really aggressive flying where you're going uh, full throttle. And whenever I went full throttle, I got a lot of D term uh, oscillations. So it looks like Happy Model here has tuned this basically um, to the edge for um, a specific type of flying style and for a specific type of battery. So if you, don't fly that flying stuff. You want to fly this acro, or if you want to fly bigger batteries for more flight time, you will probably need to do some sort of pit tune adjustment on this one. Probably decrease the D gains, probably also the P gains. I would actually just decrease the master multiplier, actually. That'd probably be the easiest thing on this one. Just drop that slider down a bit until the vibrations go away. Uh, typically will work. I didn't test that on, on my particular model because I have a feeling that this particular build is just vulnerable to more oscillations, even though it's got this, maybe they, you know, they'll pump out 10 of these and put the same pit tune on there. And for maybe five of them, you might not get any oscillations at all. And for the other five, you might get some oscillations. I don't really know how, you know, cause I don't have 10 samples and I don't have a large sample size to tell you, but just because it has the same pit tune and all the same parts doesn't mean that they'll perform the same. Um, especially if they're if they've increased the gains to the point where um, they're trying to maximize performance, they're going to maximize performance on the ones that aren't vulnerable to oscillations, and then some of the builds that are, 
you may need to make adjustments to account for that. So mine just seems to have a lower tolerance for that, for the higher gains, and when it gives you more vibrations. Another thing you could try, probably try is maybe loosen these screws here. Maybe this is tightened down too tight and from the factory. You know, again, that you know, depends on who built it. Um, but other than that, you know, generally speaking, 50% throttle and under, pretty, pretty well controlled, not a lot of oscillations. It flew pretty good, but when I went higher in the throttle range to do more type of acro maneuvers, I got a lot of sort of oscillations. And also I got more of those at the beginning of the battery when the voltage is higher versus later on, you know, probably about uh, a third of the way into the flight. Um, the vibrations would reduce because the voltage was less. So that's another factor. So in terms of the durability of this one here, you know, uh, some things I would be concerned about as these things are being exposed, like this plug here and all the, you know, some of these little parts, little components are exposed. You've got this UFL connector that could pop off. Uh, same here as well, this little connector here. This is the uh, board to a flight controller connector and also the UART. So in a crash, you know, when especially going forward, these things are going to be possibly hit by things like tree branches. Um, there's the cable right there, the um, bind buttons right here, for example. Also, the prop could possibly hit some of these parts here, depending on how much they get bent. In fairly close proximity. But yeah, the Waxnail board is definitely bigger than the HD0 board, so more stuff's going to be exposed. So if, if that's something that's really concerning for you, you may want to uh, do something to protect some of these parts. Maybe put a thin layer of epoxy on some of these here. Of course, it's going to add more weight, but then you know, protect those parts from getting ripped off, especially this, this plug here. Even on the full-size board, this has a tendency to get ripped off in a crash. Just things to think, think about here. I, I, I did have a few minor crashes and not, nothing serious happened. As you can tell, it still flies fine. So, but yeah, this is things you should be aware of and possibly try and, um, you know, do some sort of mitigation there to protect it in case uh, you do happen to crash a lot and you're worried about uh, damaging that board because if, obviously if a component pops off or something, yeah, you're gonna have to get a new one. Last thing to note here is the uh, PH 2.0 connector. So yeah, um, Happy Model is sticking with the PH 2.0 connector. Obviously it still has the solid pins. This is the same connector that they've been using for a long time now. Um, yeah, they're definitely not going to be switching. I know that a lot of you guys are saying they should switch to GMB 27 or BT 2.0 or something other than the PH 2.0 connector, but they're sticking to their guns and this is what, this is what you're going to get. So uh, obviously I use the PH 2.0 connector batteries, which is what I mostly have anyway. I have just a few GMB 27 batteries because for the most part, all the bind and flies come with the PH 2.0 connectors. Very few that come with the GMB 27 connector currently, at least from either beta FPV or happy model because happy model uses the PH 2.0 connector and beta FPV obviously uses the BT 2.0 connector. So, and then there's not a whole lot of other people that use the GMB 27. So, yeah, you can swap this out, of course, on your own and get the GME 27 connector batteries. Um, generally speaking, I think this is well known already in the community. If you switch that connector to the GME 27, you're going to get uh, less voltage sag on uh, basically on higher throttle punch outs and stuff like that compared to the PH 2.0 connector. And um, also slightly more flight time. I mean, it's not going to be huge, maybe 10, 15 seconds more overall and the same battery, but mainly the, the voltage sag is gonna be less on that higher quality connector. Now, of course, I know there's some of you out there saying that GMB 27 is just a money grab and uh, PH 2.0 is totally fine. If you, if, you, if you disagree with that, which I think is common knowledge now that the GMB 27 is a slightly better connector, if you have proof that it's not, that's a, that's a false statement, let me know exactly what your proof is because I found that the performance on the GME 27 is slightly better. It's not like a, a massive difference. You're not going to get like three times the flight time, you know, and no voltage sag or whatsoever. It's not going to be anything like that. It's just a little bit better than the PH 2.0 connector. So for those of you that are trying to eke out that little bit extra performance, then yeah, you're going to probably want to swap out the connector and get the better batteries. But honestly, for most people, this is totally flyable on the PH 2.0 connector, as you see in the flight footage I'm showing you here. 
it's capable of plenty of maneuvers. It's it's just that you're gonna have a little bit more voltage sag and a little bit less flight time compared to um, a, you know, the GMB 27 connector type batteries. Anyway, that's gonna do it for this video. Um, yeah, let me know what you guys think of this. Are you guys into Walksnail now? Uh, obviously, I haven't done a video yet on the new firmware, uh, the 28.32.10, which is the footage you're seeing here. I did upgrade this to the latest version and to and, you know, I'll probably make another video about that later, but in my opinion, um, this is probably the best firmware yet. The image quality is definitely better. The I'm still a little on the fence on the transmission quality because I'm getting some mixed results and I will have to talk about that in a separate video. We'll talk about that later. That's not appropriate for this video, but yeah, um, I'm not, uh, well, I don't want to give away everything yet, but yeah, I'm not 100% sold on on the system quite yet. It still needs a little bit more work, but it's basically, if you're thinking about walk snail, uh, it's getting there for sure. Uh, but there's definitely uh, a few things that I need to talk about, and I'll be in a separate video. Okay, uh, that's enough for this video. Talk to you guys later.